Well, leading the news today, it is a double by-election win for the Labour Party, who have succeeded in taking the former Conservative-held seats of Tamworth and Mid Bedfordshire. Sakir Starmer's party managed to overturn a huge Tory majority to take Tamworth. The swing from the Tories to Labour is 23.9%, the second highest since 1945. Sarah Edwards defeated Conservative Andrew Cooper by a majority of 1,316. Labour's second victory of the night came from Mid Bedfordshire, where Alistair Strathern seized the constituency from Conservative Festus Akinbasoya by a majority of 1,192. The Labour candidates expressed their delight and surprise at the historic victories. My message to the residents of Tamworth is this. I will be a visible and approachable Member of Parliament who delivers on our town's priorities and gives Tamworth its future back. My message to the Prime Minister is get in your government car, drive to Buckingham Palace, do the decent thing and call a general election. Residents across Mid Bedfordshire made history. After decades of being taken for granted, being left behind, being underrepresented, they made the decision it was time for change. It was time to deserve better. It was time to get better politics, higher standards, and it was time for Labour. So those were the two winning candidates. Let's take a look at the full results. Labour's candidate for Mid-Bedfordshire, Alistair Strathan, won with 13,872 votes, 1,192 more than the Conservative candidate, who received just over 12,500. They're followed by the Lib Dems, who received 9,420, and then independent candidate Gareth Mackey and Reform Party candidate Dave Holland. While in Tamworth, Labour's candidate Sarah Edwards received 11,719 votes, 1,316 votes more than the Conservative candidate Andy Cooper, who received 10,403. It's clear that in Tamworth, the right-wing vote was split as the Tories were followed by Reform UK, Britain First and UKIP. Now, if those votes had gone to the Conservative Party, they would have retained the seats. Well, let's bring in our deputy political editor, Sam Coates. He's been here uh, throughout the early hours, following events. And these were huge, record-breaking victories, Sam. Make no mistake, Jonathan, the double by-election win for the Labour Party is a surprise. When we began broadcasting the election programme last night, we didn't know that this was going to be the result. It is caused by huge swings against the Conservative Party. Frankly, the Tory vote has been cut in half and we've seen some of the biggest seats in the Conservative Party uh, actually uh, ending up being won by the Labour Party. Let's have a little look at uh, the results in a bit more detail. Uh, these are the 18th and 19th by-elections in these parliaments. They, they won't be the, the last. Tamworth in Staffordshire uh, and mid-Bedfordshire. Um, and let's explain the historic nature of the results that we've got uh, today. These are the by-election swings uh, since the Second World War. And you can see in the slightly lighter colours the two by-elections that we had uh, the results for overnight. And here we have Tamworth. That is the second biggest swing to the Labour Party from the Conservatives since the Second World War. Dudley West uh, was in the... Uh, just before Tony Blair became Prime Minister. Uh, Fraser Kemp won that. Uh, but Tamworth uh, overnight uh, is the second. Uh, and Mid-Bedfordshire is the sixth. So we really are looking at exceptional uh, swings. Uh, so that's quite important. Um, if you look at the results, uh, the Tamworth by-election was basically a straight fight between the Conservative Party and the Labour Party. Uh, Labour, yes, pipping the post, but uh, the Tory vote was about a quarter to a fifth of what it was in 2019. Um, now, if you look, uh, this is the Conservative Party. This is the right-wing party reform. If you just add that on top of the Conservative vote, then that alone would have meant that the uh, right-wing faction would have beaten the uh, Labour Party. But that didn't happen. I suspect there'll be some gnashing of teeth uh, on the right as... Um, uh, uh, as it's quite clear uh, that uh, reform could have cost the Conservatives uh, uh, victory in that seat. And you can see, look, all of the Conservative vote basically almost entirely going straight across uh, to the Labour Party. Now let's look at uh, Mid Bedfordshire. That's the Nadine Dorries seat. Um, that was a three way contest. And you can see, actually, there wasn't a great deal in it between uh, the Labour Party, the Tory Party, and the Liberal Democrat uh, 
uh, party. Of course, in 2019, this figure was much, much higher. It's a quarter to a fifth of what it was uh, back then. They, their vote, all percentage-wise, actually, uh, cut in half. Um, what's quite interesting, though, is look at this. Clearly a big, big, big drop in the Conservative vote. You can see that very clearly there. Some of it going to the Labour Party, some of it going to the Liberal Democrat Party. But without the Liberal Democrats draining some of that Tory vote, would the Labour Party have actually got in and won that seat today? It's an interesting question, because although some people predicted that that uh, three-way fight was going to harm Labour's chances of beating the Tories and allow the Tories to get up through the middle, actually, it looks to me uh, that uh, the Liberal Democrats ended up helping, and as it happens, the Lib Dems are uh, claiming credit uh, for uh, the Labour victory to some gnashing of teeth uh, in Labour HQ. But there is no sugarcoating it, despite attempts by Conservative ministers this morning to suggest that this is in some way a statistical anomaly or that uh, there is no need for big change for Rishi Sunak. These are complicated, difficult results for the governing Conservative Party. There is no sign that ministers want to do things differently, even though they claim that they are listening. Let's see how the wider party reacts.